So we will talk about today two important concepts, uh, which are the power and uh, and the energy. Okay, so we mentioned we talked about the current, and we said the current is nothing but a flow of electrons, and we talked about the voltage, and we said that the voltage is the required energy, so that it can facilitate or it will give the needed energy or the needed force for the electron to move in the in the circuit. So the current is the rate of flow of charge. And the voltage is the energy transferred per unit of charge. So if the charge do not move in the uh, circuit, it means that there is no flow of electrons, there is no current. Now, so if we multiply the current with the voltage, this is the rate of energy transfer because the current is the rate flow of a charge, the voltage is the energy transfer per charge, so the charge will cancel and we'll have the rate of uh, flow of the, of the energy. And this is called the, the power. So the power itself, P, the power, we call it P, is equal to V, the voltage, times the current. And this is one of the very fundamental relationships. And we, I mentioned this is at the end of the last uh, yesterday lecture when I talked about the power and uh, AC versus DC. So P is equal to V times I, assuming that both or every uh, parameter is a function of, of time. Okay, so volt times amp, we know that the volt, the unit of the volt is joules per coulomb. The ampere is coulombs per second. So if you multiply, coulombs will cancel. So we'll have this is joule per second or what? So the units for the power is what? We know that the units of the voltage joule per column or volt. This is more frequently used. And the current columns per second or amps, which is more used. And here this is the, the watt. Okay. Now, if we take the integration of the P, we get that this is the energy. This is the energy. So while the power is the multiplication of the voltage and the current, the energy is the integration of the power over time. Okay, so you see here from T1 to T2, this one could be any time you want. You are interested to find the energy consumption during this period of time. Now, the law of conservation of energy, that is uh, the supplied power in any circuit, is equal to the absorbed power. And this is something very, very important. So we do not produce power unless there is something to consume it. Okay, so if you remember, we said that you have a voltage standby at the socket, but the current is zero. So that there is a voltage there. And if you bring a voltmeter to measure the voltage, you will see 110 volt. So that's the voltage but the current because there is no load consuming any of this power there is no flow of current and since p is v times i since i itself is equal to zero so everything here will be zero so there is no power so if i don't consume power at the socket i will not produce any power so this is something very important to understand that in the power system in any circuit that the amount of power that we produce is equal to the amount of power we uh, we consume and the unit for energy is something very very important that is what hour the unit of energy one watt hour is equal to 360 Six thousand uh, three thousand six hundred joules, but it is what our why it's what our what is the power unit, and our is the time, and we have seen that that the energy is equal to the integration of the power times the time. 
So it's power times time. Now, this is a snapshot from the electricity prices in, in, in Waterloo or in Ontario. And it's interesting to understand this. You see here, kilowatt hour. This is the kilowatt hour. This is the, the unit in the, uh, in the bill that your father, your mother, your brother, whoever pay the bills will have. And we have in Canada or in Ontario specifically, we have three different prices during the day. So we have the off peak, mid peak and on peak. And you see the prices here are different as you move. Here the prices increases. So for example, here in, in, in weekdays. We have from 7. Uh, A.M to 7 p.m. So this is the, I mean, the, uh, from 7 uh, p.m. to 7 a.m. This is the, the time for uh, off peak. Now here you can see, for example, from uh, 11 noon to 5 p.m. This is the mid peak. And from 7 a.m., 11 uh, a.m., and from 5 p.m. 7 p.m. This is the on peak where the prices are. More than double the off peak during the weekends and holidays. It is all off peak, so the prices are flat and they are uh, relatively cheaper. So it is very important that when you use the energy at your house, if you can manage the time, that would be very good. And now uh, this is just off the record now with uh, what we call a smart grid. Now we have uh, started to implement the smart grid. Grid refers to the power system that the customer becomes part of the grid. So utilities in some places, uh, they may send you an SMS message requesting you to shut down the loads during these periods to help the grid reducing the load and they will give you incentive. Incentive uh, they might uh, give you uh, better deals if you do that. If you shut down the power, then you can give you some more more discounts. I'm not sure if such programs available in Ontario, but I know in some other parts of the world this is this is available. So, for example, if you use two two hundred forty kilowatt hour off peak, eighty kilo hour in mid peak, and sixty kilowatt hour. In on big, what is the total cost? It's very simple. You take how much power you consumed and you multiply it by the cost. And each one of, of its peak. So your total cost will be the 240 times 0 0.101 dollar, which is 10.1 cents. The 80, which is in the mid big times the 0.144. And finally, the peak. And then you will get this is your monthly bill 48.4 this is how the bill is is calculated here in uh, in ontario so it's very important uh, without changing your consumption you can reduce your bill if you manage to switch some of the major things like for example major things like laundry something major things like using the dishwasher using uh, those heavy loads using the iron uh, if you can use them off peak or in the weekends that can reduce significantly your your bill now before i go there so now we have two quantities we have the power and we have the energy and we have seen here that you are billed the bill that is given to you is as per your energy consumption not as per your power consumption can someone tell me why is that why the bill is in terms of the energy not in terms of the the power let me see your answers your thoughts why we have it in energy if someone explain it to me or to the others why we just we don't have it like in P in what not in kilo I mean in kilowatt not kilowatt hour. What is the rationale uh, behind uh, giving that the energy is what you consume? 
let me see here some of the answers here see the energy is what you consume power is being produced no that's not correct because it's based on time okay can you elaborate more because energy is what is being used or consumed uh, no not that necessary because the energy is what being consumed kilowatt it's not per hour it's kilowatt hour actually dot hour is count for times because it's easier to calculate <laughs> of course not power uh, because power is instantaneous thing no power depends on what your current and voltage same thing the energy p is the rate of energy okay it's uh, per unit hour you are paying monthly okay because the time is is not necessary it's the power that is important that is what you are charged for. Power, energy is the total amount used, whereas power is over time. Energy can be changed. Okay, let me explain to you this. Okay, it is, I, I, I already told you that what we are, you are built with is the, is the energy. It's not the, the power. Okay, now let, let, let's, let's, Give you a simple example so that you will understand. Uh, imagine this is your, you have a home or you have a room, whatever. And you have a light bulb here. And this light bulb is using 110 volt and one amp. So your power consumption, your P is equal to 110 times one amp is equal to 110 watt. So this is how much power this is consumed. Okay, now what is the power consumed in 10 hours for this, in five hours, in one minute? It's the same, it doesn't change. P has no time component here. Some of you said mentioned that, but I want them to elaborate it more. Now the energy, basically the energy is this power times time. Now, if I use the lamp for one hour, or five hours, so if I use the power for one hour, it will be 110 watt hour. If I use this for five hours, it will become 550 watt hour. So definitely I should be charged more if I use the same load, which is the light bulb, for five hours, not for one hour. This is why we are charging the customer as bare the energy because the energy has the time component in there. So how long you consume the power is, this is what we are charged. But saying that uh, power is what we consume and no, power is what we consume and what we, what we produce. And I mentioned that the amount of power we produce should be equal to the power of we consume. So we'll talk about now how to tell if the power is produced or consumed. This has nothing to do with why we are being charged or billed, but we are charged because the time component, the time stamp is there in my in my consumption or in my uh, my bill. So I hope this explains. So let's see if there's any other doubts. Yes, they are charging you for the energy, not for the time. The energy, which is how much power and for how long you are you are you are using it. Okay, so you could use less amount of power, but for long time. So let's say you are using you are consuming, uh, let's say, uh, 10, 100, 100 watt for five hours. So this means you are using 500 watt hour or you could use 50 watt for 20 hours. So your energy consumption <coughs> will be 1000 watt hour. So definitely this guy is consuming more energy than this guy, and this will be built more. Of course, if we assume that they are using the energy at the same time uh, prices. Of course, if this is used them in off peak, this to use them in on big, then they will be almost having the same the same price. So hopefully this explains why we are built with energy, not with with power. Okay, now this is something very important about the passive 
reference configuration. This is what we'll be using in this course. Now, we say, does the power P equal to VI represent energy supplied or absorbed? Now, we know that in power is equal to V times I. Now, is this is something that we supply or something we consume? Or absorb. So this is what we need to understand. So we we to understand this, we need to establish what we call the passive convention. So what is the passive convention? Passive convention says that if the current enters enters the positive terminal of a voltage, so assume that this is a voltage with this polarity, and we'll talk about how to specify the polarity later on, and the current is entering the positive polarity this one so this is would be our passive convention this which is the default the default if this is satisfies if the current is entering the positive <coughs> then the energy is being absorbed if the current is leaving the positive terminal then the energy will be considered as supply so here it is positive power energy absorbed by the element negative power energy supplied by the element and this is why we call it the passive reference uh, configuration we look here so this is the plus and minus this is the polarity and this is the current direction so if the current is entering the positive we said energy absorbed by the element and the inner the power will be positive if the energy is leaving it means that the leaving the positive, so the energy is supplied and it will be negative. And we said passive reference because the default, the positive that you are absorbing, which is passive, not active. Active if being supplied. So the positive means you are absorbing or being passive. This is why it's called passive configuration. Okay. Now, we, we might have different configuration. We might have uh, different uh, current polarities. So how we deal with this, because sometimes it is a bit confusing, as we will see. This is a hint how to deal with these questions. So if you are giving a question that you need to decide if the power is supplied or absorbed, you follow the following steps. First, make sure that the value of the voltage and the current are positive so if you are giving a negative current or a negative voltage make it positive how to make it voltage uh, positive uh, positive so if the values are negative then change it back to positive by changing the current direction we agreed about that or the voltage polarity remember we said a current going this way as minus two amps it will be a current going this way as positive two amps a voltage with this polarity minus 10 volt is equivalent to a voltage like this with a 10 volt. So what you do here, if you have the value of the voltage or the current is negative, you change it to positive by changing the polarity and the current direction. Then we follow the previous convention. What is it? If the current enters the positive terminal, then the power is absorbed. And if the current leaves the positive terminal, then the power is is supplied now since we are using post, uh, passive convention absorbed power will be positive and supplied power will be will be negative. and let's apply this to this interesting example how we can apply this to this to this example let's see here in example a the current is 2 amps, the voltage is 12. So everything is positive. So I don't need to change direction or reverse polarity. Now, a current enters the positive, IA enters the positive. IA enters the positive terminal. So it means that power is absorbed and if it's absorbed then p would be positive equal to plus 2 times 12 which is plus 24 what let's see here this example the voltage 
and the current both are positive. So again, I don't need to do anything. So in B, I, B, leave. This is enters, leaves. Sorry, let me just go back here. This is the one that I just mentioned. Okay, the second one and B, both are positive, so I don't need to do anything. So the P will equal to 12 times one, which is a 12 watt. Now, because the current leaves the positive, this would becomes minus and the power is supplied. Okay, finally, in C, let's see, look here, the current is negative, so I need to redraw the circuit. The voltage polarity, keep it because the voltage is positive, so I don't need to change the polarity, but the current, because it's negative, I will change its direction and becomes three amps going in this way. Positive, and as you can see here, that the current leaves the positive terminal, so it is supplied. So P is equal to minus three times twelve, which is minus thirty-six watt, and this is supplied. Okay, so let me explain again. B again. So the current, so the convention that we are following is the following. Here, this is the convention. This is this is the, summarizes the convention. If the current enters the positive, then the energy absorbed. If the current leaves the positive terminal of this component, then the energy is supplied. As simple as that. Okay, so then what we, we what we do here, we said, look to the voltages and current, make sure that they are positive in values. If they are positive in values, then we will apply the, the convention. Okay, so here the current enter the positive, so it means it is absorbed. Here, the current leaves the positive terminal, so it means it is, it is, supplied okay now in part c here the current actually going this way so it enter the positive but the current value is negative so if the current value is negative we have to change it to a positive current okay so the current will be in the other direction it will be it will be uh, leaving so this is will really minimize any confusion just make the voltage polarity positive and uh, or value positive and if needed change the polarity if it was negative volt and the current make it also positive value and then follow the convention if the current enter the positive terminal it is absorbed leaves the positive terminal it is it is supplied so let me see here some of your question because i think we have quite of them can you explain B again? I hopefully now it's clearer. Would C be absorbed? No, it's not absorbed because the current value is negative. So I have to return it back to positive. Then you have to reverse the direction. So our positive terminals marked. No, the, the we don't change. I mean, we keep this. The voltage in all cases was positive. So. This is the positive, this is the negative. It doesn't have to be this in this order. It could be this way. This is plus and this is minus. I also think that C is being absorbed. No, it's not absorbed because again, the current is negative. So if I t take the current to or make the current positive, so I have to reverse the direction of the current, then we will have the current leaves the, 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 the positive terminal. Okay, let me see some other questions here. Is it where the current enters, leaves the circuit, or entering, leaving the positive? 
low, you, it's not where it enters. You look to the current entering or leaving the component from the, with respect to the positive terminal. Do you change the direction if both the voltage and current? Is, okay, I will, I will give you examples about that. Is the power minus 12? Yes, it's minus 12 because it is supplied. Because the passive convention means that if it is positive value, it means it's absorbed. Supplied, it has to be negative. Doesn't current leaving positive mean that the current is going towards negative? No, no. Uh, okay, I will explain this. So current going towards positive is supplied and current going towards negative is absorbed. Okay, let me let me explain this. Let's, let me just do this in a different way to explain this. Let me insert a slide here and give it more time. Explain to you more. So I have an element here. And it's still here positive, negative, minus 5 volt, and the current minus 2 amps. Okay. So we always look to the current with respect to the positive terminal. Is it entering the positive terminal or leaving the positive terminal? Forget about the negative terminal at all. But now, before figuring this out, I have to fix the negatives here. So, I will make everything positive. This is the first thing I have to do. So this, I will change the polarity becomes plus minus, and this becomes now five volt. The current, it will go this way and becomes two amps. Forget about this negative term. I'm interested to see the, the two amps with respect to the positive. So the current means going this way, going this way. So it means that the current enter the positive terminal. So a current enter the positive terminal, it becomes absorbed. So this is as simple as it could be. Let me give you another example. If we have something like this. Two volt and we have here minus two apps okay so this is plus i don't touch the voltage polarity i keep it as it is plus minus two volt the current okay i will change the direction of the current and this becomes two amps the current going this way going this way so with respect to the positive terminal the current is leaving if the current leaves the positive terminal then this is supply now, a rational, we said that the current that we use in this course called the conventional current means a flow of positive charges. Okay, so if your device is giving away those positive charges like here, it means it is supplying. If the device is taking those positive from the positive terminal, then we say that the, your device is absorbing. This is a little bit different way, but if you go with this convention, you shouldn't have any problem. Okay, let's see this. Here we are giving the voltage as 12 volt and the current as 2E minus T. So find the power and compute the energy from T1 to T equals goes to infinity. Okay, so the power, we agreed now the power is equal to V times I. This is the power. You just simply multiply the voltage times the current. What is the voltage? It's 12 volt. What is the current? It's 2E minus T. So you multiply this. This is 24 E minus T watt. So this is your, your power. Now I want to find the energy. Energy is the integration from T1 to T2. T1 is zero. T2 is infinity. 24 E minus 
minus t. This is equal to 24 is a constant. I can take it outside the integral. So this will become 24 integration from 0 to infinity e minus t. This is will equal to 24 minus 24 because the integration of this becomes minus 1. And this be minus t. So it's minus e minus t 0 to infinity. So this becomes minus 24 e to the minus infinity minus e to the power of 0. e to minus infinity, this goes to 0. This goes to 1 minus times minus becomes plus 24 joule. And this now 24 joule is positive. So if it's positive, it means that power has been absorbed. Okay, let me see if you have any further questions that I can address. So, no, we don't swap the terminals. What we do, we only change the polarity if the voltage was negative. That's the only thing we do. But if we have negative voltage, I think I, I gave an example for it. Okay, I think now things are okay. Hopefully, hopefully now everything is 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 clear. L let's have the simplest circuit that you can imagine of. In this circuit here, compute the power absorbed or supplied by each element. So here we have one, two, three elements that we need to uh, deal with. The first element is a voltage supply. This is a voltage source. We'll know about these things later on. So it has a, a voltage, 24 volt. And at the same time, it has a current and supplies a current. This is the same current here, 12, 20, sorry, 2 amps. This element has 2 amp going through it and it has a voltage 6 volt. This is 18 volt. Now, what we will be doing next week, we will try to calculate these values. This is in this circuit. I gave you everything, the current and the voltage. Okay, so one thing here you see, because this is like we call it a loop. We'll talk about what is a loop later on. So the current that goes here is the same going here. So this is the same current, same current, same current. So everywhere, this is same current going there, but the voltages will be different. Each element will have a different voltage. So we have element one, two, and three. So let's start for element. So P at element one. Now this current is positive. The voltage is positive. So I don't need to change direction or anything. And the current enters the positive terminal. So it means it is absorbed. Okay, so it is plus 2 times 6, which is equal to plus 12 watt, and this is absorbed. Go for P2 equal to the current enters the positive terminal. Okay, and again, the current, the voltages are the same, are positive, so I don't need to change any polarity. I go to the convention directly. So this is going into, so this has to be plus 2 times 18, which is equal to 36 watt, and this is absorbed. Finally, the supply, okay, this is positive clear negative so the current is actually with respect to the positive terminal is leaving the positive terminal so you clearly you can see here this current enter the positive terminal i don't care about the negative terminal i want to repeat this again and again i don't i don't look to the negative terminal what i look is the positive terminal is it entering here in this case it's clearly that the current leaves the positive terminal so p3 will equal to minus 2 times 24, which is equal to minus 40, 48 watt. Now, this is will become supplied or delivered. Now, if you add what has been absorbed, 12 plus 
36, it is 48. And this is what we said, the conservation of energy, the amount of power I supply, it has to be, it has to be equal the total amount of power that I absorb. So minus 48 equal to plus 48. So summation of power, sometimes we call it summation of power equal to zero because the absorbed is positive and the supplied is negative. So if you add them, then you will get total of, of zero. Let me see here if you have any other questions. Energy is always equal to the integration of power. Okay, now, now this is a good question. Two positive terminals face each other. In how is it possible that the two positive terminals face each other? We will understand. I mean, uh, these positive terminals or negative or whatever, uh, these are not done in a random fashion. Actually, we will learn why this is positive and negative. Okay, so why this is positive and negative in this direction. All these things, we will learn them next week, but now bear with me. Take this as a fact that these are the polarity. Take them as a fact. Later on, we will understand why, why they have this. So, Minus 48 watt supplied. Because we use the passive convention. So I said, if I said plus 48 watt, that would be absorbed. Because the convention is passive, meaning the default, I am absorbing. So if it is positive, I am absorbing. So if it is negative, then I am supplying, not absorbing uh, energy. Okay, so I hope this uh, make it clear. Now let me ask, uh, answer the question that some of you do. Do we have always to take integration? I know, guys. Uh, my son just graduated last year from high school. I know you guys. You don't like integration for some reason. Okay, so I will not. Uh, I won't ask why. This is something that is uh, personal. But let me explain something to you guys. Uh, when we have to take integration, uh, sorry, and when we don't have to take integration, okay? So let's 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 do this. So if I tell you that the power, which is vi, assume v is equal to ten volt, and i is equal to let's say two amps, and I want to find the energy from T equal to one uh, second to one hundred seconds, something like this. Tom. Okay. So energy is equal to T one, T two, okay, and P dt. Now, the P is a constant value because you multiply a constant with a constant. So this is equal to T1, T2, constant value. This is 20 dT, which is equal to 20 integration of T1, T2, dT, dT. So this is equal to 20 T2 minus T1. So I don't need to do the integration. If the power is constant, I simply multiply the power with the time. The time here is the time difference between the starting and the end time. So the time period that you are interested with. Okay. But if either the voltage, no, neither the current or the current is not constant, like e to the power of minus 2t, as we have seen it, or minus t. Okay, so it's not constant in the period. Then I have to take the integration. Then you will have something like this. Then you, and you want to interest to find the energy here. Then you have to take the integration. But if you have it like this, constant, 
and simply just multiply this with the time period. I mean, this with this. Okay, so it's, this is the area here. So since this is constant, I don't need to take an integration. Okay, hopefully this is ad this address your your question. So I will stop here. Okay, so uh, so far we are almost there. Uh, let me first close this. So we have only one lecture.